makes you like really aware of the problem and not just here in the United States but everywhere by showing like the food, the food security it like gives a more like definite this is how it is in this country so you can like better understand their situation and possibly like what you could do to help. The website's very interactive and it made it interesting to learn. Congressman Jeff Denham from California's 10th District, thank you for joining us. Thank you, thanks for having me. Just for starters, can you tell us a little bit about your district and the kinds of agriculture within it? I represent the 10th Congressional District. Uh, we have everything from a variety of different row crops, uh, uh, lettuce, cabbage, uh, asparagus, to a lot of tree fruit. Uh, trees, almonds, uh, walnuts, um, and a lot of dairies. This is a big dairy community. And this year, uh, the House and Senate Ag Committees, as well as both chambers, were able to produce a five-year farm bill, and you were able to sit on the conference committee for that five-year farm bill. What was that experience like? Uh, great experience. Um, this was a farm bill like no other we've ever seen in the past. Not only did we uh, uh, get rid of a lot of the subsidies, uh, but we actually programmed money uh, more like the specialty crop language, which for California, we've got a lot of specialty crops. Uh, we don't need a handout. We just need to make sure that uh, pest prevention is there, research is there, and that we're actually able to export more crops. And so um, from a competitive advantage, uh, this was something that I think makes California more competitive and allows us to actually uh, ship more commodities. And you uh, serve as a member of the House Ag Committee. Uh, what, what's something that you would like, either yourself individually or the committee as a whole, what's something you'd like to see accomplished before the end of the current congressional term? Uh, the the end of this term is coming very, very quickly. Uh, we've got a lot to accomplish. Uh, you know, there is still a little bit of work to do in the Ag Committee, but most of our big Ag issues come outside of, uh, of Ag Committee. In fact, I'm on the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, and right now we're dealing with uh, water policy. Um, under the uh, EPA, the Clean Water Act, you've seen uh, an overreach of the administration on our new rule. Navigable waters were once uh, meant for commercial vessels. Uh, and now you can't even get a canoe in some of what they define as navigable waters. In fact, they're now going on to our, our farm property, taking away property rights and calling everything from a pond and a ditch uh, as water uh, that uh, should be uh, managed under the EPA rule. Uh, we're fighting back. We have a, a bill now that's passed out of committee. Uh, we expect to see a floor vote on that and we want to make sure we send a clear message uh, and, and redefine the law uh, so that we preserve uh, water rights. Another water issue, especially important within the state of California, is water rights and water, really just a lack thereof within the state of California due to a, due to a pretty severe drought. Uh, a severe drought, but also a man-made drought. I mean, we certainly have dry years that, you know, Mother Nature uh, will, uh, will change its climate from year to year. Uh, but right now what we're seeing is a lack of groundwater. We're seeing um, water that's been pushed out to the ocean. Even this year when we had rain, we saw several, several hundred thousand acre feet that was pushed out to the ocean. So we've got to change water policy to make sure that uh, uh, we've got a greater conveyance to be able to move water to uh, stressed areas. This year we could lose 600,000 acres of, of production farmland. Um, we've got to, for our economy, for our livelihood, we've got to make sure that we uh, reverse that trend and change water policy so that uh, not only do we have conveyance, but we're able to have greater storage. Storage is going to be the future. So what are some challenges involved with creating that water policy that you mentioned that is good for California, but also functional for the rest of the country? Um, a lot of these are California issues. I mean, certainly from a storage perspective, uh, we need to raise Shasta, we need to build sites. Uh, we have a number of different uh, irrigation districts that we could uh, raise the spillways uh, or even have uh, greater capacity under the current um, construction. Uh, New Malone's is a perfect example of that. Uh, we could have 100,000 additional acre feet right there at that uh, one facility alone. So we've got to be looking up and down the, uh, the mountain range. Uh, most of it is Northern California projects. It's time to get those moving. Uh, but we also need to have that regulatory relief so that a, we don't see new policies going in like this uh, Clean Water Act rule, and B, we actually stop the, uh, uh, you know, for the Delta smelt and some of the other issues that uh, we're not al allowing water to be conveyed to our, our ag communities. But we're going to continue to have a water battle in California until we have greater storage. And another battle that's been continuing in California, as well as a lot of other states, is uh, 
genetic genetically modified organism labeling on uh, on foods. Uh, where do you see that debate going? I know we've seen uh, two two attempts at legislation in California that have been unsuccessful. Do you think this is something that we're going to continue seeing? I do. I think it's going to continue to come up. Uh, you have a num number of members that have never uh, worked within agriculture that are utilizing a lot of scare tactics, no science uh, behind it, um, to try to scare people into changing law. But if you look at some of our GMOs, uh, you know we're feeding the world. Uh, we now have uh, grain and corn for not only ethanol, but for our farmers. And so we need to make sure that as we're discussing this debate, that we're doing it with uh, facts and, and actually using real science. So if you're a farmer or rancher and you see uh, a debate like this come up in your own state, what do you think are, are some action steps that, uh, that should be taken? Um, I think a lot of this is, is on the federal level. Um, you know, you're certainly seeing patchwork by community. We, we beat back, when I was chair of the Ag Committee in the state senate, we beat back some of the local initiatives. Um, but this is certainly something that should be addressed from a federal perspective uh, rather than county by county or state by state, uh, making sure that we have one policy. So we're sending a clear message to the rest of the world. We don't want to give any other country an excuse not to take California or U.S. products. Um, uh, serving uh, in, in Congress, what has been your biggest surprise? Well, what has really surprised you the most about being a member of Congress? You know, coming from a diverse state like California, certainly uh, the ag industry has a lot of challenges because there are so few farmers that serve in the state legislature. And then you look at, uh, from a national perspective, uh, you know, certainly our ag community is far different from LA or San Francisco, but New York uh, is different as well. And then you see different ag areas that have uh, very different policies uh, from state to state. So from a national perspective, um, we have seen you know, it has been tough to pass a farm bill that's gone on for way too long. Um, and I think a, a lot of national ag policies suffer because of that. So it takes a great deal of time to educate, educate members on work in the soil and property rights and water rights. Shifting gears here a little bit, can you tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and what, really, what it really was that uh, motivated you to run for Congress? You know, I grew up in farming. And um, you know the same thing that motivated me to run for the state senate, motivated me to run uh, for uh, Congress. Uh, I, I just believe in let us farm. Um, we don't need all of these different regulations that try to put us out of business. Don't try to take our water um, or some of the regulations that uh, uh, would force us to stop farming due to air regulations or dust regulations. Uh, we saw a lot of uh, a lot of regulations as well as taxes that. Uh, were very punitive to, to our local farms and uh, I wanted to see that changed and so you know having discussions with ongoing discussions with my wife and discussions around the dinner table she finally said do something about it and uh, here I am in Congress fighting to, to make that change. Congressman Jeff Denham from California's 10th District thank you for joining us. Thank you thanks for having me.